Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another daily recap. My name is Sam Morton, and we have levels on the board that are pretty spread out. What we do here is identify levels in the SPY that we use to trade against in the S&P E-mini futures throughout the day. So after they closed yesterday, they're like 90 plus points up in the pre-market 57085 currently in the pre-market at 745 a.m. Eastern. So they're moving a lot and they can move a lot today. Now I've got levels below that that I'm not necessarily going to trade if price is falling fast through them. They're just going to serve as baselines depending on what the market's doing in real time. But generally under normal conditions, they would provide support or resistance in the case of 579 or 572 for that matter. They're going to open at 930 a.m. Eastern and that's another almost two hours from now. So we'll come back to this chart and analyze any trades taken. If the SPY hits these levels and how they hit them, we're going to enter trades in the E-mini futures. And I mentioned yesterday about the IWM, just the way the daily chart looked different than the SPY chart. And they are also pretty high up above the high of that daily chart. And I actually entered a short position in its futures. I'll show it to you right now. This could be somewhat of a gamble, but they're above the high of that area. And I just see them coming down at some point today. Could be kind of a fake out. So pretty good so far, but just enter this trade short for of the uh, RTY contracts and the, those futures. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep an eye on that, of course. And I don't normally trade in the pre-market. I don't normally trade other things than the ES, but I'm in this trade. So let's see what happens. We'll talk about it this afternoon. Anyway, we'll come back to the SPY chart after the closing bell to analyze any trades that may have been triggered. Catch you on the other side. Okay, it's a quarter after six almost. We're back. These two levels were hit, pretty obvious. Nailed the top of that one. If you're playing by the rules, what would you have done? So I'm gonna give the market 15 minutes to settle in. And it just so happened that they were right below the close of the, of the 9.45 a.m. candle was 5.69.17, below this. Now, whether you adjusted it down to 5.69.20, subtracted five cents, or not, either way, that worked because that was as soon as they came back up into this so they're right below it to so the very next handle, 946. They would have short, triggered a short trade and pulled you down, pulled down for a pretty good base hit or more. I say they would have because they did. I just wasn't in this trade. I'll, I actually had to recording it pretty much up till around what time I had a, a 12 o'clock, 12 to one kind of lunch and learn meeting. So I was gone. And then I had a meeting after that. And I did take this trade, but I'll talk about that later. So the point is I wasn't recording after 12 o'clock or so or 11.55. So there really, really is nothing to see because I didn't take this trade, just didn't get set up in time and didn't want to, they were already above this when I, when I got set up. And then here, I'll talk about that uh, later, but I did take that trade, just there is no recording. I was showing someone, a coworker of mine, actually working on some advanced Excel things with Power Query and whatever to automate some of the things I'm working on. And they were coming up to this level and I just said, hey, you know, I trust this level. So I just went short with two contracts and pulled a base hit for $400 in a few minutes and that was kind of fun, but... Anyway, the, the RTY trade from this morning, uh, that played out pretty well. So let's look at that first. Well, actually, before I get too far off base, one base hit here on the short side, and they got above it. And yeah, you could have had a recycle trade at 569.30, but they never got there. I mean, this is, let me just point out, they got out of this level at 958. I want to give them 20 minutes or so. So this was a little early, but they came down within 10 cents, took off. So that's kind of the trade there. Plus, it wasn't really long enough. So they came down again. Well, this could have worked. I may have taken this um, had they hit the level, but they did not hit the level. So there's nothing there. Or when they finally got to 572.78, obviously you can see that level was good resistance and they fell away for a base hit or more. So you'll recall from the morning, this is the pre-market data here. I was short four of the RTY. By the way, if you haven't caught on yet, we're trading the Z contract, the December contract, because the rollover was the other day and they expire tomorrow actually futures. So the ES, the RTY, whatever else you're trading. So I've already moved over to the Z contract. So I'm, I'm short four. And I just kind of had this, you know, thought if they could fall fast, I mean, that's, that's pretty optimistic. I'll take half off there and trail the other half. That's a big, I mean, I'm on an hour chart here. So big jump. So I end up adjusting that. I'm going to hopefully be able to pause this in the right time to show you because I adjusted the chart. I needed my chart trading tools on here and I usually crop that off to the right. So you don't see it. And um, I didn't have it, so I wasn't able to manipulate this. I, I just wanted to move it up to where they were because I had to pack up and, you know, I wanted a trailing position on this. That way I could leave it alone and not babysit it. Take the two off at a pretty good profit. I think it was around 13, 14 points or so. And then trail the other two and see what happened. I put like a 10-point trailer on it. So let me pause this. 
you just kind of follow along, watch that tray. They kept coming down to, so I, this is me wanting to take two off at wherever they were at the time. So 1380 is what I pocketed on two contracts. And then, so you'll see that change to short two. Now I'm short two. And there's my trailer. I had to adjust it a few times to get it right because I noticed it wasn't working and it was just a matter of how I put it in there. So, so now I'm, I've already pocketed half of the position and I'm short two and I make sure everything looked good, packed up. And when I was in route to the office, I got filled on another 900 something dollars on that remaining, on that remaining trailer. So $2,300 and some change for before the market even opened. And plus this little base hit trade up here made for a pretty good day. I want to take another look at this IWM chart that the RTY is based off of. So here's the day from yesterday, the big tail candle. The high is actually 224.94. So let's call that 225, close enough. So they'd have to get, this is my opinion, they'd have to get a day or two or more above, closes above this level of 225 to get up to the next pivot high up here. Well, what would they do today? Well, they opened, in the pre-market, they were above this. That's where I went short. That's what I want to show you. And then, you know, they've closed today, definitely below the high of this. They tried. They obviously tried. So here's here's an hourly chart just to show you what happened before the market even opened that they were up there meeting some pretty heavy resistance. So that's where I went short right there and wrote that down. Just to give you another visual what the IWM or the Russell 2000 was doing uh, today, a little different than the SPY. What can we tell on the daily chart of the SPY? Well, good volume today. They gave us a little doji candle, a lot of things going on. They're trying to fight some areas, and this is all-time highs again. They're making records, but could it, would it be surprising if they fall away with this type of thing going on? Timing's pretty good. I haven't counted how many days it's taken to get from this low, but they had a you know an interim pullback, and so this this provides us a, the ability to provide some or find some levels higher up if we need them. But right now, I don't know. Wouldn't be surprised if they come back down to test some of these areas down here tomorrow, like maybe bounce off this area. Not predicting it. I'm not saying that there will be levels in the morning that will be more precise, but just with this little setup here, I just pointed out that that's usually a signal of a trend change, at least an interim trend change, based on the time it's taking them to get up there, the fact that this type of candle, and the fact that the volume is pretty good. And there are other things I'm looking at, which will become more clear tomorrow morning. Over here on the tracking system, I have two logs. This is the PBR, or the play in by the rules log, where every single level is treated the same way. And it goes back in time all the way to uh, beginning of 2022. And then my trades are right here. Well, first, today's trades were just the two base hits. So eight points, because four points a base hit. And that's what you could have expected to get before commissions based on number of ES contracts traded. My trades were different because of the pre-market trade with the RTY futures. And then I had that one base hit. I just did not get the one at five fifty. 569.25, but I did get this one. And so it was uh, $2,700, mostly with the four contract rate up there. And I want to point something out also, if you're kind of new, then you probably don't know that starting in March of 2024, so if I filter out March to current time, I started the um, SAMS trades here just to kind of keep track of them because they're different than playing by the rules in the sense that I don't necessarily play by my own rules. It's not that I'm breaking rules, but I'll trail positions. I may not trade some levels. The levels serve as a good baseline for, you know, treating it like a process. And if price does something when it gets to a level, then you do something else. Every scenario is counted for. I've got rules for everything. On my trades, you've seen them. There's been a few, you know, home runs and that's like you can call that 46 points when I trailed a big trailer there and, you know, pretty good run. So I just want to point out that when I filter down to this period between March and current time, the trade days, 124 days where these levels were hit, not every day a level is hit. You'll see blanks every now and then right here, for example, right here, um, 124 days. And you can see the days ending in the green is 78.23%, loss 21.77. That's how I'll track that. And the daily averages, the average per hour, that's based on 930 in the morning till 4 p.m. Just thought it'd be interesting to show the productive time per hour. And I have percentages of base hits, fumbles, and TKOs, or technical knockouts. That's what these mean. They're all color-coded. So you can see that compared to my trades. You can see there's less trades taken during the same period of time, but the profit percentages, uh, it, profit percentage is better. Loss is better. Both are better. And you can see the averages um, and totals. So I'm trying to convey all of what I do in this trading course, which I've mentioned many times. And those of you who are waiting, I appreciate you waiting patiently. 
I just have kind of stepped way back and I'm working on other things, but it'll be done. I want it to be good and cover everything. And when that course is available, then I'm teaching you everything that I do to trade my own trades. And then subscription to these levels are going to be more than just the levels. I'm going to try to provide some, some kind of guidance. But I am kind of enjoying just providing the levels in the morning to those on my list. If you're curious about how to get those, just go to ticksandtrades.com. You will find a form on there. There's two forms. Both are basically the same thing. Just enter your information. And once I have your email, I will provide the levels to you in the morning via an email. Looks a little bit like this. This is this morning's email sent out at uh, 8.57 a.m. And you can read through it. well before the market opens. You can do whatever you want with those. Once the subscription service is live, these levels won't be given away for free anymore. There's a lot of work and math that goes behind these, and you can learn it yourself, or you can let me do the heavy lifting and provide them for you. So that's what I have for today. Thanks for watching. Consider liking this video, subscribing if you found it useful. We'll be back tomorrow morning with new levels and a new game plan, and I'll talk to you in the next recap video. Have a great rest of your day.